Ooh, I could probably take Argyle in a fight. Probably a shark and a bear at the same time, too. Here we go. Gotta love this book. Howdy ho, BF Theers, and welcome to another episode of Befriending Friendly Dudes. And earlier today, I saw the new Matthew Vaughn film. Not starring Henry Cavill, but rather Bryce Dallas Howard and Sam Rockwell. I honestly had no idea what to expect from this film, given its premise. It's a story about spies, but very quickly it's revealed that it's just a story written by someone else. And then it turns out that that story that was written by somebody is actually predicting what's happening in the espionage world. So that's the first twist, uh, that the movie isn't about Argyle, kind of. There are, after that, lots of twists and surprises in this film, and that may definitely turn some people away, but I loved it. You never know what to expect or who to trust a real spy thriller. But let's get into the nitty gritty. First up, man, this was just a fun film. Matthew Vaughn really had his way with a lot of weird and goofy action sequences. A good uh, portion of them involving Bryce Dallas Howard's BDH's cat, Alfie. Uh, from the action style that Vaughn has brought from the Kingsman series to ice skating and explosions to doing a sick grind with the car down a stairwell and, and so much more just silly action uh, from a rather timid main character. I never felt jerked away from the slower moments with these high intensity action sequences, which was nice. Uh, Sam Rockwell did one of my favorite combat techniques wherein he was hiding under the floorboards and then just exploded out from underneath them and just sort of blasting people. <laughs> Alfie, the cat, had some stellar moments too, although sometimes it was a bit cringe. I, I did still love seeing this chubby cat get after it. Some of, well, most of the CGI here wasn't great. Whether it was because of a rush deadline or not enough people, it wasn't quite polished. I thought the humor was well played and Rockwell has fantastic timing and physicality. BDH and Rockwell had real rapport. I believed all aspects of their complicated, yeah, complicated relationship. All the characters, including the small roles like Argyle, were so much fun to watch, even though they had limited screen time. Sam Jackson worked with what he had and killed it. I do wish we would have seen more of the book characters, but I'm not too upset. The real world did plenty to keep me engaged. The sets were varied and exciting. Mykonos, France, London, the US. Sometimes the green screen was a bit off-putting, but it didn't happen that often. The cinematography was fine. It wasn't bad, and it displayed action well. Uh, it definitely did its job without blowing me away. Not every film can have revolutionary camera work, and the style was already established in uh, the original Kingsman film. It was more dialed down, which was a bit of a bummer, but not too shabby. I did enjoy the cat POV shots, though. Strange, but very fun. The editing and pacing, uh, I think, is where this film truly starts to break down. Maybe for the better, but maybe for the worse. A lot of the film felt more like uh, vignettes. Something would happen and then cool down mode. Change sets and repeat. I don't think this is bad, necessarily, but it does break up the flow of the film. Now, I liked all of these vignettes, but the puzzle pieces weren't the easiest to put together. There are, however, three distinctive sections, not arcs uh, to the film, and they have to do with how BDH changes. Not as a character, uh, emotionally, philosophically, mentally, or anything, but like who the character is. When you watch it, which you definitely should, uh, you'll see what I mean. It works somewhat because when information is revealed, that's when the change happens. So you follow BDH's path with her, but again, it, it can be clunky sometimes. Some interesting ideas are played with. Most of them not throughout the entirety of the film, but they are presented and chewed on, like a five-course meal. Uh, one is the fact that BDH doesn't want a relationship because she is already in one with her work. Uh, which is normal for artists like this, but during the early action sequences, uh, sometimes when Rockwell is fighting, it will flash between him and Argyle, who 
BDH is definitely digging on. Another one which I think adds to the uh, multitude of twists and gets a little complex to break down is the fact that BDH isn't who she thinks she is at all and all of these twists start to mess with her mind. Uh, Rockwell, I think is who it was, gives her a line and he says, you aren't losing your mind, you're finding it. BDH is struggling with identity and all the information is, is confusing her, all the while the real BDH is trying to escape. And on top of that, BDH is very different from the beginning of the film from who she actually is. At the end, this starts to come into play uh, more because we as an audience don't know which side of her we're seeing. There is some love stuff here and there that posits some interesting questions, but they're not uh, too deep. Sometimes uh, this overload of quirky ideas gets lost, muddled within itself. Too much was done with what we had, but luckily it worked out better than some other films. I think part of this was the reflection of the fake characters with the real ones. So I didn't have to try as hard to keep track of like who each character was. Not their names, but their personality. Overall, sure, Argyle had some problems, and it's no Top Gun Maverick, but it's definitely no Dial of Destiny either. Somewhere in between, and, and really even a bit higher than that. So it, it's worth a matinee, maybe not full ticket price, so, which I didn't pay because I'm AMC A-list, hey AMC. You should give us a sponsor. Yeah. But I think I'll give Argyle Wee. a 7 out of 10. Wee. Well, that's all from me, folks. I hope this was informative and somewhat entertaining. If you enjoy it, drop a like and subscribe so that we can get your official BFD film degree in the mail to you. If you've seen the movie, drop a comment. Let me know what you think. And if you haven't, go watch it. Come back and then tell me why you liked it or why you didn't like it. Or you can just drop a silly comment, whatever, engagement and all that stuff. Uh, check out our merch store link below so we can do this full time for you guys. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I guess I'm Jake. What does Kyle say? Oh, uh, I guess I'm Jake and probably have been and uh, most likely will be. But yeah, I'll see you next time. Ciao. Ah!